Um, since I'm the only economist in this round, I suppose I'll do what I was invited to do and contribute to the debate about Schengen in economists' point of view. But don't worry, it's not going to be all figures. There will be some figures, but not many. And I'll try to focus on the rationale and on highlighting why Schengen is actually a very important feature and a cornerstone of the European integration. Actually, why are we talking about Schengen? Schengen is not a particularly new policy in the European Union. It has been in place for quite a long time. And in this time, it has been a policy that has been probably sort of people's favorite in Europe. It has been rarely criticized, and most of the mentionings of it were fairly positive. What has changed? The migration crisis of, well, I'm inclined to say of 2015, but of course it is not fundamentally solved yet, has exposed some flaws potentially, or some, some dangers, uh, to choose a more neutral word, with the Schengen Agreement. At a certain moment, at the end of last year, it looked like the whole system would collapse like a card house. Like more and more countries were closing their borders, raising fences, and doing all those things that Schengen, that should establish the free movement of people and make Europeans feel together, um, actually is, is contrary to. Um, in the light of that situation, we as the Bertelmann Stiftung felt the need to state the obvious and to show that Schengen is not merely a symbol of European integration, it is a functional part, and that Schengen is making a substantial contribution um, to economic integration and to prosperity. And we should not forget that because that is too often forgotten the debate. So let me say a few words on how we benefit from Schengen and how costly it would be if we left this mechanism. Now, if we introduce border controls on a large scale, that will of course mean higher costs for production. Um, you all have heard the term uh, just-in-time delivery. This is a key principle of modern production and it's becoming ever more important. If you introduce border controls, you raise transport costs because all the lorries have to wait at uh, the border to be checked, which is making transport more lengthy, less reliable, and uh, will thus disrupt production chains across Europe. Higher production costs, of course, for consumers mean higher prices because, well, the, important, the imported goods from other countries will, of course, be more expensive because of transport costs, and even those products being produced domestically will rise in prices because very often they rely on preliminaries that come from other countries. Um, if customers face higher prices, they'll be able to buy less. There'll be less consumption and less demand. And that is going to declining economic growth and prosperity. These are just the direct effects. They're indirect to follow in a second round, uh, which I'll describe in a second, but for the time being, let us stick with those direct effects that I have described. Um, we have done some calculations to get an idea how important uh, these effects might actually be. We have examined two scenarios. One is a conservative scenario where we assume that prices will be rising by 1%, and a more pessimistic scenario where we assume the rise of the prices to be 3%. Now, this may not sound like very much, but the effects are substantial. For the EU 24 countries, for which our model has uh, reliable data, um, between 2016 and 2025, we would get an accumulated loss of growth in the height of 470 billion euros. And that is the conservative scenario. In the pessimistic scenario, the number would be, um, for the same time period, 1,430 billion euros. Now, it's very hard to imagine what these large numbers actually mean. So let me give you a comparison. 
the pessimistic scenario is about of the order of the GDP of Italy. So you can see that these costs are quite substantial. I would also like to add that since this conference deals very much with issues regarding the Visegrad countries, that those countries will be particularly badly affected by uh, border controls. Um, especially Poland and the Czech Republic, but in all those countries, the loss in annual growth will be higher than in the EU average. And that is something for policymakers to consider. <laughs>